happens to be Bisexual Awareness Week, and no one has acknowledged it! Lesbian History Month was in March! Nobody said a goddamn thing! Of course, lesbians get a month and we get a week. Billy and Luke, how are you doing today? Good, Great, how are you? you? Really, really good. Such a pleasure to talk to you both. Thank First you. of all, congratulations on the movie. I only watched it this morning, and I can't wait to watch it again with a packed house because I know some of those one-liners are going to kill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the thing that jumped out to me the most while I was watching it is that I think for an entire generation, this will be the movie where someone in the audience will finally feel seen, feel represented in a movie that is getting such a kind of wide release, which is fantastic. For you both, can you remember the first show or movie that you watched and you felt seen or represented by a character on screen? There really was very little when I was a kid growing up in the 80s and early 90s. There, 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 at, at some point we started to see indie movies which had queer characters. Um, I remember seeing most of the gay characters I saw initially were on television and maybe in documentaries. Um, MTV was really at the forefront of LGBTQ representation. And, you know, I grew up in those, that the late 80s, early 90s. So I remember seeing Madonna's documentary, Truth or Dare, and she was surrounded by gay dancers. And I actually went to see that in the movie theater with my parents who took me because I was a huge Madonna fan and insisted that I go see it immediately. And there's a scene in that movie where two of her gay male dancers make out with each other. They go to the New York Pride Parade. Um, and, I, and also on MTV show The Real World, every season it seemed to have an openly LGBTQ person. Uh, the first season had a bisexual guy named Norm. Then we saw Pedro Zamora, who was openly gay and died of AIDS at a very young age. And, you know, those were the first gay men I saw on screen. And um, I even though obviously AIDS was a huge part of the conversation at that point as it needed to be. Uh, I still aspired to being like that. I wanted to lead that life. It was great to see that type of representation. Even before I was saying out loud that I was gay, I kind of knew it. And it made me feel like there would be a world out there that I would be a part of. That was a cool, creative, exciting world. And I, I always appreciated the the examples of it that we got. Absolutely. I really honestly can't remember actual representation. I, I think one of the sort of pivotal gay sort of media experiences I had was watching the Phil Donahue show when he had the Chippendale dancers come on. <laughs> I don't know if they were a gay, but it was certainly doing something to my gay brain. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, and I think for a lot of men, especially as it relates to my character of Aaron, this sort of idealized version of masculinity was very reflective of in that 1980s sort of muscly sort of bodybuilder guy that I think many gay men wanted to aspire to be like. And men in general and men wanted in general. to aspire to be. Yeah. This is your open invitation to come to Dublin, Ireland for Pride next year. Uh, to I celebrate. would love oh, that. We would love that. We love thank Ireland. You. Fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. What is going on with you? My whole life, I prided myself on being self-reliant, but this guy has gone into my head. Maybe you're both bottoms and that's the problem. Bottom day. Bottom day. Yeah. Gay sex was more fun when straight people were uncomfortable with it. Somebody.